special thing that, that certainly I found when I first arrived in Brixton, which was around about 1984, was the fact that it was amazingly cosmopolitan, mixed. But within that, there was this incredibly vibrant, and there always had been, a really vibrant, creative, artistic community. I like the mix of different people and cultures that we've got here. There's always something going on. And I love the liveliness. I love all the different people. Um, my three children have been born here. And um, yeah, it's just an enormous part of our life. I couldn't ever imagine living anywhere else. Brixton is just one of those places that you can mention it to anybody in the country and the, maybe even on most parts of the globe and they know it. So there's something about Brixton. It's got an energy to it. It's drawn people of all different backgrounds, all different races and cultures live here. It's a vibrant area, it's a market. There's a bit of everything. There's the Brixton Academy, there's a wonderful park. Um, there's so many different things about it. It's one of those places that make London, London. This area, it was full of squats anyway, so there was this whole ideology of DIY, do it yourself, get properties, do them up yourself and, and live quite cheaply. Um, but there was also a real need for single housing, for, for young people, single person units at Lambeth, the council wasn't offering at all. At that time, the housing stock was being, I, 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 I still don't quite understand what was happening, but there were a lot of empty houses all over London and um, a lot of people with nowhere to live. So we were part of a squatting movement. All that I know is that there was a, a, a lesbian and gay community that uh, were living within these houses. I wouldn't say that they would call themselves a community, but there were lesbian and gay men squatting here. Sometime in the 70s, a group of gay men, and I think there might have been a few women, not many, they um, squatted these four properties on Mail Road and four properties on Railton Road that were all derelict. They were council houses and they were all derelict. And these guys squatted them and did them up, landscaped the garden, lived here and I think they had lots of sort of parties and did lots of camp things. They were all um, very much involved in the anti-Nazi league that was around at the time and all sorts of demonstrations. Very political, most of them. Squatting was actually quite a good kind of venue for the uh, communal living, for example. I mean, we lived communally with another mother and her child, and for, for us mothers, it was quite liberating because we could look after each other's children and then go to housing court meetings or, you know, or whatever we happened to be doing. Well, it was quite interesting around that time because there was the Women's Centre, then there was the anarchists, and then there was the big gay community, and, and we wouldn't speak to the anarchists because they shouldn't be meeting as a group. And, and then, and the gay community were very big in the women's centre and everybody. So there was a lot of there was a lot of activity. I found it very hard having a small child and um, every so often the council would decide they need the house back so they could either refurbish it or demolish it and put up something else. Having to be go to court and be chucked out and um, have to find somewhere else to squat. Well we had children. It's not it's not very it's not very secure. So we wanted to find some security. 
and the, and, the, and the big gay community, they wanted security and people just wanted security. And then there was legislation in 1976 that enabled housing associations to start to operate. And there was a lot of people in, the, in, in that sector that were very interested in the notion of a co-op. There was a lot of interaction between people from different groups and um, we met um, Mary Evans and Derek Evans and um, Mary Evans was very knowledgeable about dealing with um, you know, councils and sort of official bodies and she got us together in her uh, house in Mail Road, she was a council tenant at the time, and um, gave us this um, inspiration really to actually found our own cooperative housing association. We started to talk about the idea of organising, which was not a million miles from the way we were organising politically in the street. A group of, uh, of the squatters went to the council and asked to buy the property. And the council said, excuse me, we don't sell to squatters, we are only interested in selling to registered housing associations or housing co-ops, so go away. To begin with, the four of us and then more and more people joined and the, there was a considerable amount of work and different aspects of of uh, um, making it happen that had to be dished out to different people and more and more people came on board and fulfilled all of those um, jobs that needed to be done and, um, and, and it sort of really got the impetus. They started chatting amongst themselves and other houses around the Poets Roads uh, and they basically got together and they formed Brixton Housing Co-op. And they then went back to the council and said, we'd like to buy the properties. And they said, we've told you we don't sell to squatters. We're not squatters. We're a registered housing co-op. And they produced the papers. And that was basically the start of, uh, of it. A little perfect storm, really, of need and political developments and a cluster of people in all of the areas that were interested in making it work. With the Brixton Blues I'm going out of my mind One of the first houses was Shakespeare Road and then some on Dulwich Road then there would have been uh, Milton Road, a number there and, uh, and the, the lesbian and gay community. And the idea is you, you get the money from the housing corporation but you do all the development yourself. Whoever was allocated to that property, they would say how they wanted it to be and the architects would draw up the plans. But the, the tenants and the people in the housing cart would move the process along. The criteria of people sort of uh, joining the co-op was initially it was people who were single and homeless because as far as the council were concerned, this was the one group of people that had absolutely no rights to, uh, to housing. You have to have some kind of relationship with the area, obviously. You either have to work or live or have some sort of history with, with Lambeth. There used to be a whole number of committees, but essentially the, the ones that, uh, that still exist are the membership committee, the maintenance committee and then the management committee. Mostly what we're looking for is active people, people who are going to keep the housing co-op alive. We've still got a few houses which are sort of single houses, so to suit families. I had a, a, a child and wanted a more permanent place. The council were taking back our short life properties. So I got housed um, in the centre of Brixton in, in a co-op place and it was absolutely fantastic. I was accepted in the co-op and I started being active and doing a co-op activity. And we used to have area meetings and all sit cross-legged on the floor, 
you know, in those sort of hippie days, as it were, but it's changed a lot. There'll be some duties in terms of just ensuring that you put in a certain number of hours. So for example, you know, to become a member, to making sure that the hours are put in and that, and that you're actually genuinely committed, that's extremely, that's extremely important. Um, it's also important that you, you do certain things in terms of the upkeep of actual the properties themselves because with a co-op, technically everybody owns the property, so without everybody doing their bit, the whole thing can't work. With the Brixton blues, I'm going out of my mind. Well, I just hope the co-op carries on, especially for people like myself who are on low income. It's a way of getting really excellent housing, you know, um, at a reasonable rent. I really, really wish that we can keep going as we are, as a, as a, a a fairly small local group of people that are in charge of our own housing. What you do have within the co-op is a small number of people who are active, who keep the co-op going. And what we need to do is find a way to bring the younger members of the co-op um, to become more involved so they start to take responsibilities for running, you know, running the co-op and that way it, uh, it, will, uh, it will survive. It's not just about um, the housing co-op but it's the wider community around here and making links with other housing co-ops and maybe even cooperatives in other countries. The idea of the co-op has to be revitalised. We need to think about what it means to be a co-op in the 2017. I'm going out of my mind, yeah. Every day and every night, baby, I swallow a whole bottle of wine. That's the only way I can keep it on. Yeah, every day and every night, a whole bottle of wine. I gotta keep on going, so give me, give me.